Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions. Thank you so much for coming and being with us this Saturday morning. I so enjoy the time that we get to have together. Now, as you know, we always want to start things off in the Word of God, in worship, and hearing the Word of God, hearing wonderful things about Him and praying together. That's how we want to start off our day. So let's open with some prayer. Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, as we get ready to have the unfolding of your word together today, Lord, we pray, be with us, Lord God. Help us, Lord, to see and understand your word, to be able to apply it in our life. Help us, Lord God, to continually, Lord, put you first. Lord, we thank you that your hand is upon us, no matter the season. And Lord, as we are coming into this Christmas holiday season, Lord, help us to continually remember that you are the reason for the season, Lord God. God, that we will continue to put our minds and our focus on you. We give you glory and praise this morning, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So why don't we kick it off by hearing Psalms 91. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I'll say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the hour that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample on their foot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. All right. Now, as you know, after we do Psalms 91, we do want to get into a great time of praise and worship. So let's open up our hearts this morning and worship our Lord together.
All right, now we're going to go through our Old Testament passage together. Would you please open with me your Bibles this morning to Hosea chapter 8. And let's start with verse 1, and we're going to go all the way through chapter 9, verse 17 together. Let us begin. Set the trumpet to your lips. One like a vulture is over the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. So he's saying they have turned away from God. They've turned away from his laws, turned away from all of the things that he set up, not because of control, but for our good, for what will help us, bless us, keep us in a close relationship with him, because our actions can also affect our relationship with God. It says in verse 2, To me they cry, My God, we, Israel, know you. Israel has spurned the good. The enemy shall pursue him. They made kings, but not through me. They ignored God in the decisions that they were making. Not very smart. They set up princes, but I knew it not. With their silver and gold, they made idols for their own destruction. They didn't have enough love and focus and devotion and relationship on God. But they then turn to these other things instead of serving him. We need our heart to be in the right place that our focus and priority is on him and on the things that he desires for us, not the other way around. I have spurned your calf, O Samaria. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For it is from Israel a craftsman made it. It is not God. In other words, this isn't a godly thing. This isn't something God set up. This is man-made. The calf of Samaria shall be broken into pieces. For they sow the wind, they shall also reap the whirlwind. The standing grain has no heads, it shall yield no flower. If it were to yield, strangers were to devour it. Here we're talking about God saying, hey, okay, you've put other things in front of me. You have idolatry. You've been dealing with other things as your God and putting them before me. Then I'm going to take away these things that you have in your life because of me. Israel is swallowed up. Already they are among the nations as a useless vessel. For they have gone up to Assyria, a wild donkey wandering alone. Ephraim has also hired lovers. In other words, prostitution. Though they hire allies among the nations, I will soon gather them up. And the king and princes shall soon writhe because of the tribute. Again, because of their un godly actions. There's consequences that come. Because Ephraim has multiplied altars for sinning, not just a way to sin, not just an altar of sin, but there's now multiplication process of these altars for sinning. They have become to him altars for sinning. He has so corrupted the way to worship God. There's now altars for sin. Were I to write for him my laws by the ten thousands, they would regard as a strange thing because they have no relationship with God. So they're going to look at the things of God and be like, oh, that's weird. Oh, that's strange because there's no personal relationship. As for my sacrificial offerings, they sacrifice meat and eat it, but the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins they shall return to Egypt. This is talking about a type of sin when they were in slavery, when things were not good for them. Okay, you want it that way? God says, you're going to go back to what I brought you out of. For Israel has forgotten his maker and built palaces, and Judah has multiplied fortified cities. So I will send a fire upon his cities and shall devour her strongholds. You need to turn away from sin. It is clear here. You need to turn to God. There's consequences that come for putting other things before him. Chapter 9. Rejoice not, O Israel. Exalt not like the people, for you have played the whore, forsaking God. You loved a prostitute wages on the all threshing floors. Israel, hear. You're giving gifts. You're regarding for idols. You're prostituting things. Your love is not pure. Your relationship isn't pure. Your offerings are not pure. 
That's not right. Threshing floor and wine vat shall not feed them, and the new wine shall fail them. They shall not remain in the land of the Lord, but Ephraim shall return to Egypt to slavery. And they shall eat unclean food in Assyria. They shall not pour drink offerings of wine to the Lord, as their sacrifices shall not please him. Why? Because they were in sin, because there was idolatry in their life. That is not a life that God can bless, brothers and sisters. It shall be like a mourner's bread to them. All who eat of it shall be defiled, for their bread shall be for their hunger only. It shall not come to the house of the Lord. What will you do on the day of the appointed festival and on the day of the feast of the Lord? For behold, they are going away from destruction, but Egypt shall gather them. Memphis shall bury them. Nestles shall possess their precious things of silver. Thorns shall be in their tents. The days of punishment have come. The day of recompose has come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool. The man in the spirit is mad because of your great iniquity and great hatred. The prophet is the watchman of Ephraim with my God, yet a fowler's snare is on all his ways, and hatred in the house of God. They have deeply corrupted themselves as the days of Gibeah. He will remember their iniquity, and he will punish their sins. God is saying, you know what? Sin is involved. I'm going to punishment. There's not going to be getting away with it. No, 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 no. There is accountability. Like grapes in the wilderness, I found Israel. Like the first fruit on the fig tree in the first season, I saw your fathers. But they came to Baal Peor and consecrated themselves to the thing of shame and became detestable like the thing they love. God cannot and does not take delight in them. He loved them, but yet they still went into idolatry. They still went astray. They still went into sin. They went into a lifestyle that God cannot bless. And we need to regularly take a look at our lifestyle and make sure that we are living a life that God can bless. Ephraim glory shall fly away like a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Even if they bring up children, I will bereave them till none is left. Woe to them when I depart from them. In other words, when he leaves, when the hand of protection comes off, when all of that gets pulled away, woe to them. Things are going to start happening. Ephraim, as I have seen, was like a young palm planted in a meadow. But Ephraim must lead his children out of the slaughter. Give them, O Lord, what will you give? Give them a miscarrying womb and dry beasts. Every evil of theirs in Gilgal, there I began to hate them. Because of the wickedness of their deeds, I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. And their princes are rebels." Ephraim is stricken. Their root is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Even though they give birth, I will put their beloved children to death. No continuation. No going from generation to generation. My God will reject them because they have not listened to me. They were wanderers among the nation. So again, here we're seeing his mercy, his love, his goodness. That hand is now going to be off of their life and they will be judged. They will wander. They are going to suffer if that hand comes off. Now there is mercy. There is love. There is forgiveness. There is hope. But brothers and sisters, it comes into our life when we turn away from the sin, when we put that aside and we turn back to him, when we make him Lord of our life and say that he is important, that we serve no other, that we give him the glory, we give him the praise, that that is when it all changes. So we're going to be getting into some more praise and worship right now. I hope as you worship, you're going to take a look at your life and you're going to evaluate and you're going to think through what things are there in my life that I need to let go of and what things do I need to focus more on him? 
What do I need to do? What do I need to have? And these are great things for you to think about and for you to worship him about and talk to him about as we enter into another time of praise and worship right now. turning to our New Testament passage today. Let's open to Jude 1, and we're going to go through verse 12 to verse 25 together this morning. Now, it says these are blemishes on your love feast. These are things that we got to get rid of. These are things we got to work on that are going to keep you from being clean, from being pure. As they feast with you without fear, looking after themselves, things up to no good. Waterless clouds swept along by winds, fruitless trees in late autumn, twice dead, uprooted. 
wild waves of sea casting up the foam of their own shame, wandering stars for whom the gloom of the utter darkness has been reserved forever. In other words, there's not going to be joy. There's not going to be heaven. There's not going to be peace or only hell for these people who don't turn away from all of these things, who don't deal with the relationship in their heart and give their focus back to God to turn him back as their first love. It was also about these that Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied, saying, Behold, the Lord came with 10,000 of his holy ones to execute judgment, because that is who he is. That's what he is going to do. Judgment is his, declares the Lord, on all, and to convict the ungodly, because we're going to stand before him. We're going to stand before him and have to give account for all the things that we said and did and did not do and did not say in our life, for all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things that the ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, malcontents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud-mouthed boasters, showing favoritism to gain advantage. Now, this shows their character. This shows that you need to stay away from these kinds of things because these are characteristics that God cannot bless. These are characteristics that God is going to be calling out in the time of judgment when you are standing before him. This shows some characteristics. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. They said to you in the last time, there will be scoffers following their own ungodly passions in these who cause divisions, worldly people who are devoid of the spirit. God is not in them. God is not in them. It could be a false prophet, but these are people leading people astray, causing division in the body of Christ. Stay away from those people. But you, beloved, build yourself up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. You need to be reading your Bible. You need to be praying in the word of God. You need to be praying to him. You need to be praying in the spirit. And you need to be pointing yourself towards God, building yourself up, it says here, in the faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. Amen. So exciting. And have mercy on those who doubt. Now, this part is interesting and fun and shows us something we need to all be doing. Save others by snatching them out of the fire to show others mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. We are to share the gospel. We're to help save people. That's why this great commission is so important. We are going to need to cover the nation, the world with the word of God. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. Did you know that? Did you know that that's who he is? He can keep you from stumbling. He can help you. That's his characteristic. And is to present you blameless at this day of judgment. All of the past will be erased. And you will stand before him. And you will stand blameless before God. As if you have never sinned. Oh, that is exciting before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our savior through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Now, I hope you see this morning the importance of turning away from sin again and turning to him and realizing that along the way, we need to save others. We need to share the gospel. We need to keep watch of ourselves that things aren't going to come and stumble us, but that he will help us to keep us from stumbling, that he loves us. But if we turn away from him 
And if we focus our heart and our attention on idolaters, on all these other sins, that that hand of protection is going to come off because you can live a life that God will not bless. So it's very important. Let's live a life that he can bless. I'm not saying we are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. The Bible says we will all fall short of the glory of God. But we can do our best. We can work on having a true heart that turns to God. Lord, help me. Lord, I need you. Lord, I don't want to do this. Lord, I don't want this sin in my life. Lord, I think there's stuff you need to deal with. Lord, show me mercy. Lord, guide me. Teach me. Help me. Keep me from stumbling. Lord, I love you. Lord, I want to know about you. Lord, reveal yourself to me. It's all in how we act and how we have a relationship with our Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Father, we pray and ask, help us, Lord God, to live a life that you can bless. Help us, Lord, to have a relationship with you that we'll be hungry for you, hungry for the things of you and your kingdom and your word. Lord, we also pray, Lord, we desire to be far away from sin. If there's things in our life that we need to work on, things in our life that we need to let go of, please point those out to us. Father, we understand that we are not perfect, but Lord, we want to live a life that you can bless. We want to get rid of some of these blemishes in our lives, Lord God, these things that could be holding us back, Lord. Father, we come and we ask, Lord, give us opportunities to share you. Give us opportunities to share the gospel that we may help save these people, Father God, that we may help share your word. And Lord, that these people could be saved from a painful, hopeless life without you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, as we go about our day, be with us, Father. Lord, we come and we ask, give wisdom to our government. Be with our medical professionals, our teachers, and all of our frontliners who are working so hard. Lord, we pray, continue to heal our land. Give guidance, give us wisdom. We thank you that protection will be upon our households, Lord, that sickness and disease be far, far away. Lord, we come give you glory, honor, and praise, for you are so worthy, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'm Basara A. Thank you so much for being here with me this morning. Now, this weekend, please make sure when you come to COP, you pick up your Jesus box. You know, it is so exciting when we get to open up our treasures and give him the greatest gift because he gave us the greatest gift of all. I hope you have a fantastic day and week as we get into this burr season. Enjoy your day and see you in God's house this wonderful weekend. Bye guys.